All right, hello everybody. Hasn't this, hey, hasn't this been a great build so far? We've seen all kinds of great announcements. Things like the bot platform that has gone out at the latest keynote. Things like Xamarin being free, that's incredible. And closest to my heart is Cortana extensibility and the brand new Actions platform that we've announced here at Build 2016. My name is Doreen Brown. I'm a program manager on Cortana and I focus on how you can join our team of experts to help Cortana be her best self. So as part of that, I just want to thank everybody here pretty quickly. Uh, who here has actually built voice commands for Cortana before? Raise your hand. OK, so about a quarter of the audience. That's pretty good. Uh, we've seen over the last year, uh, with voice commands shipping in Windows 10, over 1,000 apps shipped to the Windows Store. That's incredible. We've seen lots of feedback, we've heard some questions and some comments, and everything that you have said has gone into this next iteration of Cortana extensibility. Now that being said, Corta voice commands aren't going anywhere, your investments are important, voice commands are a critical part of the Cortana platform, but today we are focusing mostly on the new proactive action story. So why would you build a proactive action? Why does this matter to you? Proactive actions are a way to drive usage of your apps. Essentially, Cortana has knowledge on end users. Uh, she knows things about their day. She knows user preferences. You can register your sites and your services and your businesses as items that Cortana knows about so that users can effortlessly get things done. But what does that mean to you? Everybody here in this crowd is now part of Cortana's team of experts. So congratulations on that. <laughs> you are the best at what you do, right? We at Microsoft have Cortana doing many things. Uh, but I know that many of you guys and girls are doing many things that Cortana may or may not know about right now. And so what you can do is you write your universal apps, you write your Android apps, and you write your websites. So note that as Cortana is kind of this unbounded personal assistant, so too can she do more on your Android devices, Windows devices, and websites. And you choose things that Cortana knows about end users, so what we call insights, that can surface your actions at just the right time. Your actions are a metaphysical representation of, or your apps are this representation of your action. So Cortana is aware of your action. She executes your app to complete the task that the user has set out to do, right? So by registering your action, Cortana can surface your apps and your websites at the time best for the end user so that your users interacting with Cortana are happier with Cortana and they are happier with your apps and services and websites. Today, we are going to focus on primarily the developer portion of this talk. So yesterday there was a 200 level session focused primarily on the bottom half of this chart. So this was all about why users should use your apps and how trust is established between Cortana and the user and your apps and your actions and all the different kinds of consent that go into passing such personal data through to third-party services. And I highly recommend that in addition to this, you watch that session as well. But for the purposes of this hour, we will focus primarily on the developer portion of writing apps for Cortana. So let's take a look. Previously to build, we have actually onboarded a few additional experts to build some actions for Cortana. And we'll show you that today. I'm gonna switch over to what we call the Cortana Canvas. So the Canvas is this little square in Windows 10 or on your Android device that shows what Cortana knows about you and how she can help you. And Cortana has picked up that I have a current meeting and a late meeting. So for this current meeting, you know, we're surfacing a pre, what we call a predefined action through a company called Just Eat. And Just Eat uh, delivers food to people all over the UK, all over Great Britain, all over the world. They focus primarily on customizing their app to be better because Cortana has data about the user. So I'm gonna show you now. 
I'm currently in a meeting. Cortana alerted me before this meeting, the session, that I had a thing. And she can order me food to be delivered to this location. You'll note that I need to consent to this data being passed through. But the app launches. This is just a universal app. And it shows me preferences on sushi, because in my notebook, I've listed that I'm interested in sushi. If I go to eat and drink, I'll show you right here. So because this sushi is part of my interests, Just Eat can show me sushi restaurants, and I am more likely to order food from this restaurant. In addition, Cortana can also surface more contextual actions. So maybe actions that are less focused on user data and more on what the user is doing at this very specific moment. Peel is a company that is a remote control for the home. That's their focus. So they do things like handle thermostats and light bulbs and all sorts of really cool Internet of Things type machinery. And you can see, you know, maybe I'm working really late. I'm working until midnight, and I won't have the chance to go home right away. But that's, you know, normally Peel turns my lights on at 10 o'clock when I get back, so my house is nice and warm. But I'm heading home late. So Cortana can use Peel as her expert in the home to actually launch, to turn my lights on and do something else at the right time. So I'm going to temporarily pretend I'm at my house. And you'll see I have a thermostat up on this projector, as well as a few lights. And if this all changed right away, like in the middle of my session or before my session, it wouldn't be the right time for my house to be warm. I want to save energy, and so I can use Peel to do that for me. By clicking the Welcome Me Home button here, which you won't be able to see, that's fine, Peel will go through and actually turn my lights on. Give it a few minutes, because there's like 600 Xboxes on here. Right, so the house should be set to 75 degrees, and the light should turn on. That's okay. We'll give it a few minutes. It's waiting until I get home from work. We'll say it that way. But anyway, you get the idea. You know, it's Cortana is working in the home, working with you. She's unbounded from your exact machine. So, you know, she can start reaching into, you know, your internet and your house to get things done better for you. So we walked through a few types of proactive actions. Uh, order food is one of them. But what are the other kinds of actions that you can create? First off, we talked through predefined actions. These are types of actions that Cortana is very, very aware of. And she is able to deeply integrate these actions into her experiences. At Build, we are announcing two types of these actions. First off is order food, which is an example that Just Eat has created for us. And the other is send message, which you can see downstairs with a company called Glimpse. So these are experiences deeply integrated into Cortana, and she will act on them a little bit differently in that she can complete these actions on your behalf. Then there's everything else. So all the stuff that you guys are great at is what is under this Your Actions section. These are completely defined by you, and Cortana is aware of when these surface. So this is the case of Peel, who is you know, waiting to turn my lights on or waiting to up my thermostat. Right now, there's some examples. Feed my dog, you can see downstairs, with Petsy. So take a look downstairs after the session and get a good idea of what these actions can do. So we've talked about different types of actions. Let's talk about how these actions surface. Insights are how Cortana learns about the world and her users, and it's how she acts on her learnings. So these are predefined by Microsoft, and at least for now, they are very location-based, so data from your device that we're picking up in the world around you, or they're meeting-based, because Cortana is very, very good at reading and understanding and acting on your calendar. But this really wouldn't be Cortana or really wouldn't be working with a personal assistant if Cortana couldn't pass data to you about the person who is using these actions. So Cortana's intelligence can be used at runtime to augment your apps and your websites. And we'll walk through kind of how this works. So let's take a quick example. The user has a meeting during lunch. That's me. I have meetings during lunch all the time. I need to go through and order food. And I will do so using Cortana and this, this other action. Because I have a meeting during lunch, there are many pieces of information available to me. 
things like the title of the meeting, the start and end time of the meeting, where the meeting's located, you know, everything you can do to determine where you should deliver this food to me. Now, because I want to order food, there's additional data available as well. The user's current location, the user's current preferences. Uh, I like sushi, so you can get that information about me. And this is all used to create a contextually aware app. So let's take a look at how one of our partners declared this action, right, to use this data to make their app shine. What I'm going to do is switch over to the Microsoft Developer Portal, which is where you as developers register the apps and the websites and the actions you've created. Just Eat has already created a universal Windows app. They already had their deep links enabled. It took them 15 minutes to integrate with Cortana, beginning to end. I sat there the whole time. All they needed to do was say, here's my action. It's order food with Just Eat. Here are the insights available to me. In this case, Just Eat cares about your meeting during lunch or your next meeting or your current meeting. And they've said that they're interested in my cuisine preferences and the location that they should deliver this food to. So you can see that they've said a few things here, but there are many other things available. So I'll zoom in here just so you can see. Things like the UTC meeting offset time or the location in text in case you want to show a friendly string to the users. These change depending on the insight, but they're all things that can make your app better. Next, Just Eat declared their deep links, which is how Cortana knows to launch the app at the right time and the right place. So you can see here, Just Eat has created a Windows version of their app and an Android version of their app, and Cortana knows on those platforms to launch this deep link at the right time. So you, there's browser support available as well, just in case you need a fallback. We will default to you know, the native application. But you can imagine Skype bots or iOS or any other platform as part of this. And then all these things we're thinking about and they're on our roadmap. So we'll get there in good time. Finally, I need to declare some basic metadata about this action. So this action name is just internal to me. It can be whatever I want. But you see this display text. You see this provider name. You see the description of what this action does. And this is all provided to the end users so that they know what they're consenting to when they launch this action. Finally, you see the markets that this action is available in. And I know everyone's kind of frowning right now when looking at these three checkboxes. I can see it in the audience. Right now, for the developer preview, Cortana actions are available in the US, they are available in Great Britain, and they are available in China. That's it. That's fine. Because over time, we will roll out to more locations. But for the purposes of this dev preview, we want to make sure that we're scaling out and doing the right thing. All right. So here, we have seen Just Eat create their action. Let's create our own. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to my local dev box. And I will show you my version of the Cortana Developer Center. I have a few actions created here. But let's say you know, I, I'm at build, I'm looking at all these sessions, and I would love more information about the sessions I'd like to go to. Cortana can pull that information from my calendar and start to show me more information here. So that's what we'll do. First, I'm just going to click Create a New Action. I will create what's listed in here as an arbitrary action, and I will call it Hello Build. So as this loads, let's talk about the insights. We're going to set this to current meeting so I can see what the session is that I'm currently talking about. And I can also see the next meeting. And I will add some contextual info to the context of these insights that I can use in my app. Contextual info is declared by creating slots. So I'm going to create a slot called title. You can see I've added it to this insight. And I will map this to the current title of my meeting. I'll do the same for the next meeting, just reusing the same slot. And we'll just save that. Next, 
I need to declare the deep link that will open my app at the right time. And so we'll declare this first, and then we'll go through and actually walk through what the app looks like so you can see some of the Cortana-specific pieces of building a universal app with Cortana enabled. So we'll call this hello build. And we'll say meeting title equals the slot that I've declared up here. Right. So right now, the slot that I've declared looks a little funky, right? I've got those like double at signs. That's just an indication that I've declared this variable in my deep link. It'll resolve at runtime. Don't stress out about it. So I'll save this. And finally, I'll just put in some metadata about the action. So hello build will say show session info as my display text. I'll put my name in as I am the provider. And we'll say that this action shows session data at build 2016. Finally, I'll add a quick icon. We'll save this. And that's it. So that's all I need to do to integrate with Cortana. This will appear in my canvas. It won't do anything right now because we don't have a Windows app built just yet. But let's look at that. Here I have Visual Studio open. The only thing I've done here is I've created a very basic universal uh, Windows app. And I've said, here is a protocol that I would like to launch my deep link. Now, if you remember, in the portal, we said this hello build as a, as a deep link here. And so I've matched that protocol in my description. So if you go to, say, Edge or something else, you type in hello world colon whack whack, it'll actually open this app. So I've done a few other things, basically just to show how Cortana works. Um, unactivated is, how, is the method that is called when the deep link is enabled, right? If you want more information on this, I'm happy to point you towards any of the Universal Windows app sessions. They've done a great job this year. Uh, basically, what I've done is I've started to pull out the query strings and the query parameters. I've done a few other things, but we'll kind of just go through it and show you how it works at runtime. Let's run the app without any Cortana-enabled data, just to show you what it does by default. So we'll build, it'll load for a little while. And you'll basically see that because there's no deep link, because there's no metadata, all we get is this no session found, which isn't very useful, right? But because this is here, we can go through and actually see it working with Cortana. So I'm going to go back to the canvas. You can see that as I add more actions and as I have more actions available to me, Cortana, the cards begin to scale and, and to show the actions available. And I have this hello build here. You can see I'll need some additional info, like the title of the meeting. And as I consent to this, to this action, we'll launch, we'll hit the debug card, just to kind of show you what we're doing. So this is the point where the deep link has been enabled. You can see down here this hello build, meeting title, blah, 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 blah. So this is how this, this URI has been resolved. It's actually passing through my data from, the, from my Outlook calendar. You can also see, you know, here's my query string and so on and so forth. But all we really need is that title and all we really need is that query string. So we'll pass this through. Let's continue to the next step. At this point, we've passed that query string data down into the middle layer of the app, and we're kind of getting the UI ready with all the right data. So you can see here, I've started just using basic, basic Windows libraries. I'm getting this meeting title query string that I've pulled out. You can see in the debug info, it's right here. I have the session data as pulled from a helper method that I have said earlier, right? But there's a few things that I'm doing that are maybe Cortana specific. One very critical piece of Cortana functionality and something to know as you're developing is that while Cortana will do her best to give you all the data available, she may not know everything that you would like to know about the end user. And in the case where this isn't maybe possible, you know, you're requesting data that she may not have, we just can't provide it. And so you need to be sure that you're checking for these things and that you have fallback mechanisms in your app to just make sure that you're not getting kind of some weird functionality. 
right? So I'm going to continue. And you can see here this very basic app. Threw it together uh, pretty quickly. Uh, here's a Cortana features step by step on how to teach Cortana. And so I can see my session name and my session title, and that was it. That's it. That's all I need to do to integrate with Cortana. Yay. All right. So you saw earlier, I was building all of this information based on my Outlook calendar. And you can see that you know, this is my live calendar. If I want to start debugging for Cortana, this might get kind of messy pretty quickly, because I don't want to change my calendar, which is how I do all my work, just to match the debug scenario that I'm currently working on. We've been now, part of the feature of Cortana extensibility is that we've added these debug cards, which will emulate the insights that the user has. So you can make sure that even though you may not fit all the scenarios for your action and for your end users, Cortana can reach out to you as an expert in the right way. Here in the notebook, because I'm part of this flight, I can actually go to information about my meetings and reminders. And there's a couple options for me here. But you can see that I have this next meeting card enabled. And so what this will do is it will always surface this next meeting and will always tell me the right thing to do. I will go back to my canvas and scroll down. And you see that there's this next meeting. This data is hard-coded. You know, if you don't have a next meeting, you'll still see this. But I can still go in. I can launch my session info. And it acts exactly the same. Now, I don't, have a build, I don't have a session Cortana spec review, but you get the idea. Now, we've made Cortana extensibility as simple as we can possibly get it. And we want you to join our team of experts to extend and help make Cortana be the best she can be. Developer.microsoft.com slash Cortana is the Cortana Dev Center. This is where you can read, you can get invitations to, a, to, to apply to the developer preview. You can read the documentation and code samples. And you can, as part of the dev preview, register these proactive actions. The dev preview is somewhat, you know, we're, we're scaling it out as we go. If you don't get an answer right away, that's totally fine. We'll get back to you as we get to you. But we love to hear your feedback. We love to see what you build. And we just love to build with you for Cortana. While you're here, go to the booth, check out the demos, request an invite for the preview program, and come talk to us with your ideas and everything you'd like to see uh, about Cortana. Right? That was it. That's this simple. If you have questions about Cortana extensibility, please feel free to ask. Joining me on stage is our natural language expert, Brad. And so we will be able to answer questions about the breadth of Cortana extensibility. Questions? Nope. Oh, yes? Yes, so we're planning on setting up a user voice. Yes. And of course, there's also, in, as part of the dev preview program, we're all on Slack. So as you onboard onto the dev preview, and you can just talk to the engineers as part of the preview program. Anything else? Oh, yep. So the, the question was, uh, Cortana, does Cortana learn from user interaction more or less? Right? And the answer is yes. Cortana does learn as you interact with her. So there are what we call these upsell cards, which is where you are asked data from Cortana. And then as you continue to use these actions, Cortana will learn which ones you like the most, which ones you like the least, and then begin to start surfacing the right ones for you at the right time. Next question. So the question was, once you register the action in the Dev Center, how long does it take for the action to show up in the canvas? The answer is it's very quick. Uh, right now, we have it aimed at roughly a minute, but expect that number to change as 
things scale and go on. So it's, a, it's an ongoing developer preview. We'll tweak these numbers in either direction, so keep that in mind. But we'll love to hear your feedback. A question on the mic? Yeah. Could you, ex can you explain a little bit how to develop our own insights? For example, uh, if there is some event in the database, if I could, uh, through a service broker or something like that, to hook that and then send a message, you know, the action would be to send a message, but the uh, insight would be some event that took place. Yeah, so the question was, can you develop your own insights and how do you do it? Uh, the answer is, today there is no way for you to develop your own insights. It is a roadmap feature. It is something that we've heard quite a bit of feedback on, but it's definitely something we're thinking about. Next question. Yep. A little bit of column. So the question was, how does Cortana learn and pick up data about the user? Uh, is it kind of incremental, where you release every so often, or is it uh, continuous? The answer is a little bit of both, and I would love to talk to you about that offline. Next question. Question at the mic. Yes. Um, so does Cortana uh, interrupt or spontaneously display this information? How does it appear to the user, and when? So the way Cortana notifies the user changes on the action. So for some of the predefined actions, we have notifications or other ways for Cortana to talk to you. Uh, for predefined actions, a lot of it is through the canvas. So okay. the user has to click on the Cortana um, uh, entry box to see the canvas? For now, yes, but we're tweaking things as we go. It's part of the developer preview is figuring out what the best way to talk to end users is. OK, and is it, uh, it just text or is there speech? Does Cortana speak out? I'd love to talk to you about that offline. OK. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, just real quick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. The insights that show up automatically, so as you register these actions that are available, are the only insights that show up are based on the applications you have installed? Or would I expect, as, I, as more people publish more actions, they're just going to start showing up for all of my next meetings? Yeah. So for the developer preview, just real quick as part of that, the actions you register are only available to you. Now, as we continue out through the Windows Anniversary Edition, this will change. Actions, once they are through a validation and certification process, will be available to all users of Cortana, regardless of if they have the app installed or not. Now, that being said, how they rank these actions may change depending on if they have the app installed or not. But this is a great way to start to kind of upsell some of your apps because they are made available and discoverable to users who might not otherwise know that there's an app for that platform. So I mean, OK, well, that's interesting. So how, assume, assuming quite a few of these get created in a short period of time, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know if you're going to disclose, what, what is kind of the ranking algorithm to get you up? So assume that I don't have any app installed to be able to handle this type of action. What's going to? Yeah, How so are we, you going to bubble to the top? We rank on a few key factors, uh, what users think are, is part of that. But yeah, it's a little bit of our secret sauce. OK. Thanks. Um, so when you do uh, spoken actions to Cortana, like when you can ask Cortana to do something for you, as a developer, you can choose whether that launches your UI or whether you can respond directly to Cortana and she responds directly back to the user. Mm -hmm. is, there a, is, is deep linking the only way to take an action from Cortana, or is there going to be an option where you could that uh, she can give you the, inf the information, it happens to be enough um, for you to perform the action, and then you can just reply straight back onto the canvas. Got it. That's a great question for Brad. Um, so today, uh, at least with the, the VCD support, the voice command definitions through the Windows applications, there's both a foreground launch and also a background um, task that you can call into uh, by exposing an API within your application, right? And so that allows for, um, on Windows, um, a headless type of interaction with your application. Um, from the proactive action side today, um, it is deep linking into the app and passing that context uh, with the consent um, given by the, the user. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Looking around. Yeah.
So the question was, you know, is there a contextual kind of trigger of these insights? That's the question. Got it. So the question was, is, is, is there a way for developers to specify that a Cortana action is maybe, or a calendar invite or some kind of thing in an insight is more relevant to certain apps than others? Right now, it's kind of a blanket case, but as we continue through the dev program, we'll make tweaks, and that's something that we're thinking about on our roadmap. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>